Hello and welcome to a new Luna Lua tutorial. In this episode I want to discuss manipulation of the player and what you can do in order to create stuff like your own player characters or player power-ups, going over the checks required for that and what might be useful to account for when creating your own custom actions. So the primary uh, mechanic that we have introduced in the current version, the Magalex 3 build, is player.keys, which basically replaces, if you're familiar with Luna Lua from Beta 3, uh, the player.down key pressing, up key pressing kind of stuff. This one is basically a four way Boolean, which lets you check um, whether or not the player is pressing, releasing, uh, has a button pressed or has a button not pressed. So for example you can check player keys up equals key pressed and then perform something. For example just like printing a dialog for whether or not the player is currently pressing the up key. And of course if we put this all in on tick we can check whether or not this is happening at any given frame. So running the test Oh, I forgot to uh, pull out the song from the last time I recorded. So, upkey pressed, upkey released. Of course, I released the upkey in order to uh, access the dialog box. If I now take this out, we can uh, look more closely at when I released the upkey. I assure you, I um, did release the upkey, and even though you couldn't see anything, there was something happening there on the keyboard. So. What I want to write down here real quick is a quick reference to uh, the kind of stuff you can you can do with this. You can uh, check keys pressed for the frame in which the key is pressed. Keys down is true on every frame the key is held down. Keys unpressed is for whenever you release the key. And keys uh, up is for when the key is not pressed at all. For example, you can also just check player.keys.up if you just want a positive result and not player.keys.up if you want a negative result. Furthermore, the following uh, directions and inputs are available to you. Up, down, left, right, jump, alt jump for the spin jump, run and alt run for the tanuki state, as well as pause and drop item for those inputs respectively. So using the drop item key I want to quickly replace what I'm doing with uh, an NPC spawn just so we can see what's happening. For example I'm just gonna drop a Goomba onto the player's face a little bit above the player because that's kind of my thing. I drop Goombas from this guy. So as you can see a lot of Goombas spawned because I was holding down the button and I'm currently only checking for whether or not the button is held down. I'm not checking for any particular state uh, or anything like that. But as you could also see, the Goombas uh, all continued spawning when the player died. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a check for the player death timer. And as you can see here now, uh, the Goombas stop spawning when the player has died because uh, the check doesn't pass anymore. This is one of the most important checks to do for the player uh, if you're trying to add your own functionality because if you don't do this then the player can still act uh, based on your code after the player has died. Beyond that there is a similar kind of state which I want to address which is the forced state, the forced animation state. It is something that uh, the player runs into under many different conditions. And I'm going to quickly print it on screens to see what it is doing to the player here. Force state is currently zero, but as you can see when I collect the mushroom it's gonna switch to one. And while I'm in this force state, uh, as you know when you play the game, you cannot act. When I run to the spine it's two, and it's basically like anything that's non-zero whenever the player is in a state where they cannot uh, control themselves. Like when you are entering a warp pipe, when you're in the Tanuki statue, all of those have their own uh, forced state. And uh, often this is also something you want to check for, of course, because you don't want the player to act like if you, you don't want the player to throw a fireball when they are currently being stunned from a power, a power down. So if you check for that as well, then I can drop Goombas on my head and die, of course, but. 
Hold on, I'm gonna do this better this time. If I collect the mushroom and then go up here, then you can see that the Goombas will not drop anymore while I am taking damage. As you can see, there was an interruption in the Goomba wave as I took damage. Those are like the biggest checks for uh, inability to act for the player, but there are more, more context sensitive ones. For this next one, we will need to start using memory offsets. This one is the memory offset for whether or not the player is underwater. So I put the water box down, and as you can see, when the uh, memory offset is true, then the player is underwater and the check does not pass. This is particularly important for when you want to do something to the player's jump, but you do not want to do something when the player is swimming in the same situation. Another important check in a similar vein is the one for climbing. This one works a little bit differently because climbing is uh, split into different states which are all greater than zero. So when this offset, offset 40, is zero, then we are not climbing, but if it is greater than zero, then we are climbing. So if I put down a vine here real quick, you can see that the number disappears in the corner, which uh, also means I cannot drop any Goombas anymore. So if I jump now, that's where the Goombas are. So by now we have a pretty robust set of checks in place, which pretty much cover most of the stuff we have. But now if one which is very important uh, in very specific scenarios is uh, player is ground touching. Like whenever you want to do something when the player is grounded or is not grounded, this one is your go-to. Like uh, I can use player is ground touching to prevent myself from spawning Goombas whenever I'm on the ground. So I need to be in the air to spawn the Goombas that will be my inevitable demise. Now, I'm not quite as one-dimensional as it might seem from the Goombas in this video and the other one, uh, because now I'm going to transform this into, into something that's actually useful, namely a double jump. These checks are all also equally important for creating a double jump. If we are on the ground, then we can uh, reset our has jumped flag to false to enable us to create our double jump again. Then we want to check whether or not we have already jumped, and also just break out if we haven't check whether or not we are jumping and in there we can do some stuff to the player. One thing I should note is that these return end checks are only applicable when your uh, function doesn't check for anything else below. Uh, you can invert the if statement like player death timer equals zero then and then inside that then perform your other checks if you do need more granular stuff. So we're ch uh, changing the speed y, there's also a change to the player's upward jumping force, making it so that the player can hold the jump button for 30 more frames to ascend. I'm also playing the jump sound effect and setting has jumped to true. So as you can see there is now a double jump. And you cannot jump a third time in the air because it has jumped flag and stuff like that. So one thing we can remove is the speed y thing, because the upwards jumping force overrides that. And as you can see, nothing changed to the jump. And another thing we can do is we can change the uh, upwards jumping force to something smaller in order to give ourselves a much smaller double jump. So that's everything I wanted to discuss today, and I hope you learned something, and I'll see you next time.